Hello, world, and welcome to the fourth episode of Kerbal Rocket School. This episode will cover boosters and parallel stages. What kind of boosters are there? How do I set them up? What are the best kinds? Well, let's find out. As I mentioned in the last episode, a booster is also called a parallel stage. It is attached to the side of the main rocket and it helps push the main craft into a higher orbit. To add a booster onto your rocket, you have to use a radial decoupler. There are three different types of radial decouplers. Two of them are about the same size, but one of them has a higher ejection force than the other. The ejection force relates to how much the rocket will be pushed away when decoupling. The stronger decoupler is generally only needed with really big boosters. However, if you are having trouble with your boosters crashing into your main craft, you should probably switch out to the stronger decouplers. The structural pylon is smaller and weaker, and should only be used outside the atmosphere. There are three different types of boosters, each using one of the three different types of engines. The classic type of booster is the solid rocket engine. These guys have a ton of kick, even with not that much mass. They're very powerful. The only problem is, once you light them up, you can't turn them off. You also can't control them with the throttle. These qualities make them very good for getting your ship out of the lower atmosphere. They come in three sizes. The Rockamax is a little more than twice as large and powerful than the RT-10. There is also the Separatron, which is not intended for use as an engine, but to aid in decoupling large rockets. You could, however, use them as a rocket if you really want to. You can also use liquid fuel engines for boosters. These basically work as more rockets strapped to the side of the main rocket. Liquid fuel boosters hold a few advantages over SRBs. For one, they're generally more fuel efficient. You will get more use out of a liquid fuel booster than an SRB of the same size. Second, you can control them with the throttle. Using the throttle, you can make sure you lose as little speed as possible to atmospheric drag when leaving the curbit. Finally, there's more customization. With liquid fuel boosters, you have all the options that you would have with a rocket. You can use fuel tanks and engines of all different sizes, shapes, and functionalities. Lastly, there is also the option for using jet engines as boosters. This technique is one not many people know about nor utilize. The advantages of a jet engine are apparent. Their weight and fuel to thrust efficiency in atmospheres is unparalleled. However, their usefulness becomes non-existent outside of 14,000 meters. Delvaris from the Kerbal Space Program subreddit writes, The idea is a variation of the Stratolaunch system proposed by real-world spacecraft, including SpaceX, for much the same reason. By taking the craft up as high as we reasonably can before using the rockets, you save money on the relatively more expensive rocket fuel, and you save weight on the spacecraft itself, which is by far the most expensive proposition for a spacecraft, adding weight. Additionally, by getting rid of boosters that may not be recoverable or reusable, you save money on not having to rebuild that part every time. But that's enough talk. We wouldn't be scientists if we didn't test it ourselves. So, I'm going to build a rocket, and we'll see how much each type of booster helps. Here we go! Alright, here we are on the launch pad. This is our control test. We have a simple 3 meter rocket. I wanted it to be a fairly large rocket so that, you know, it kind of mimics uh, something you would actually do in game. Okay, right now we're leaving the thickest part of the atmosphere. We still have about two thirds of our final tank left. We're now leaving the middle part of the atmosphere and still have just about a fourth of our last tank left. And here we are running out of fuel. We hit about uh, 1200 meters per second. Our expected apoapsis is at 165 kilometers. So here we are re-entering. Gonna decouple our capsule, deploy our drag chute, cross our fingers, hope our parachute doesn't rip off. There we are, okay. And a safe landing. Let's check our flight log to see exactly how high we went. Okay, 165.039 kilometers. 
Pretty good. Now for our SRB test. I have three uh, RT10 SRB boosters, or solid rocket boosters, uh, arranged evenly. Uh, all engines are firing at the same time. Here we are, uh, the SRBs ran out, we add about th 3 kilometers in height. Uh, as you can see there, all I set, set it up so I, the boosters uh, ran at, uh, this, the boosters fired at the same time as the main engine. Uh, just so we can get some extra lift. They still helped, but just not as much. Here you are exiting the, the medium part of the atmosphere. We still about have we still have about half of our last tank left. And here we are burning off the last of our fuel. We hit 1600 meters per second. Our expected apoapsis is at 267 kilometers. Alright, here we are re-entering, decoupling our parachute yet again, deploying our drag chutes, a ton of <laughs> deceleration forces there, uh, our parachute deploying fully, and landing safely. Alright, let's see how high we got. 267.634 kilometers. Pretty good again. Almost a uh, hundred kilometers better than last time. Now for the liquid fuel boosters. I have again three medium tanks and three uh, liquid fuel engines underneath them. Uh, I, as you can see here, I can apply a very low thrust because a very low throttle because we actually have some pretty good uh, thrust. I accidentally uh, decoupled a bit early, but they were just about out of fuel, so I don't think that'll have a major impact on the outcomes. Here we are exiting the thinnest part of the the thickest part of the atmosphere, and now the main part of the atmosphere. We still have about one third of our last tank left, which is better than the control test. Here we are burning the last of our fuel off. We got to about 1400 meters per second. Our expected apoapsis is at 201 kilometers. Still pretty good, not as good as the solid rocket boosters. Here we are landing safely. All right, our maximum height was 201.384 kilometers. Again, better than the control test, but not as good as the SRBs. As you can see here with the uh, jet engine boosters, I actually have eight, but I'm using the very small ones. The thing with the jet engine boosters, you have to use a lot of the engines to get enough thrust to actually pull you up, but you don't need a lot of fuel because they're so efficient. So I'm using the very small fuel tanks. I'm actually still gonna have more fuel than I need, but it's the smallest fuel tank I can actually use. Uh, as you can see here, I set it up so that the the jet engines go off before the main engine. They do need a few seconds to spool up, as you can see, but once they do, you get a good amount of thrust. I'm afraid that you guys may say I'm being unfair and using more jet engine boosters, but that's simply how you use them. I tried to use each type of booster to their strengths. I used the throttle for the liquid and fuel boosters, and I just... You know, I use the SRBs like they're meant to be used. So I'm trying to use each booster as they're trying to, as they're meant to be used. Uh, as you can see here, after once we get out of the thickest part of the atmosphere, they're basically useless. So I just let them go. Uh, they still got us to about 1,300, 13 kilometers without needing to use any of our main fuel tanks. Uh, here we are leaving the medium part of the atmosphere. We still have one third of our first tank left. So we have plenty of fuel to burn. Here we are, finally fun running out of fuel. We got up to 2,600 meters per second. Our expected apoapsis is at, is at about uh, 1,500 kilometers, which is very good. And here we are returning back to Kerbin. Since we're dropping down from such a great height, we're actually going to get a lot of deceleration forces. As you can see, it's pushing us way off the, uh, the gauge there for our accelerometer. But we made it safely. Our parachute deployed safely without ripping off. And there's our final altitude, 1500 kilometers. Alright, so here are the results. 
It's control about 165, SRVs 267, liquid fuel boosters 201, and jet engine boosters 1500. What is our conclusion? Well, I tried to use each booster to its strength, to, to its strengths. However, I use the same type of main rocket. And the thing is, you try to use each booster for their own different, uh, their own specialties. So, uh, you can use, first of all, you can use each type of booster on the same rocket in different staging. Uh, but generally, you will use liquid fuel boosters on most of your rockets, and they'll just basically become part of your rocket. Uh, like I said, uh, SRBs can be used for exiting the thickest part of the atmosphere, uh, but they're but they're also good on, you know, whenever you need a quick, uh, a good boost in velocity. Uh, however, I feel that jet engine boosters are much more useful than people think they are. And I hope that after seeing this, more people will start using them because they are very useful. You can use, uh, you know, you can, you don't need much fuel at all to run them, and you still, and they can bring your craft up uh, out of the thickest part of the atmosphere without using any of your normal rocket fuel. Uh, so, our conclusion is that each of them has their own strength. But for getting out of the thickest part of the atmosphere, I would recommend jet engine boosters. These words keep being thrown around, but what is the difference between a solid fuel rocket and a liquid fuel rocket? To find out, let's take a look at what's going on inside the rockets. Inside a solid rocket booster, you will see a narrow tube surrounded by a solid fuel. This fuel can be black powder, zinc sulfur, sugars, or others. The fuel is already mixed with an oxidizer, usually potassium nitrate. At the top of a rocket is the ignition charge. This charge ignites the rocket fuel, which burns from the inside out. The resulting exhaust is funneled through the nozzle and shot out of the rocket. Since the fuel is already mixed with the oxidizer, once the rocket is ignited, there is no stopping it. Inside a liquid fuel rocket, there are two separate tanks. One holds the oxidizer and the other holds the fuel. This fuel is a liquid, such as liquid hydrogen, kerosene, gasoline, alcohol, or something else. These two fuel tanks are connected to a combustion chamber via pumps. Inside the combustion chamber, they will react and be shot out through the rocket through the nozzle. The pumps control the fuel flow, allowing for throttled control of the engine. The solid fuel rocket designs allow for the fuel to be burned very fast, creating a lot of thrust. However, due to the fact that the fuel is pre-mixed with an oxidizer, it is impossible for the reaction to be stopped. The separated tanks of a liquid fuel engine allow for more control, but less power. That's all for this time, and I will see you out there.